It's some of the most hostile terrain on earth. The Owen Stanleys form a barrier between PNG's north and south coast, breached only by a 96 kilometer path that snakes through the mountains. This is the trail that became known as the Kokoda Track to the Australian soldiers who fought here. In 1942, the invading Japanese chose this route in their push towards Australia. But what made the Kokoda Trail famous were the extraordinary efforts by the Australian diggers to eventually repel them. Now, new generations of Australians venerate this track, while others come here for the ultimate endurance test. Biscuits plain, biscuits beef, three packets each. This is where it all begins, poolside at a motel in Port Moresby. And former West Australian Police Inspector Frank Taylor is preparing his latest group for the trick of their life. Don't eat the two-minute noodles until we, we tell you. He's one of at least a dozen tour operators who ply the trail. Frank Taylor's been running tricks for 20 years. He'll offer his clients a detailed commentary of history along the way. It's going to be tough enough. It doesn't have to be a super arduous military type. Uh, let's push you to the extreme. Jenny Di Gian Domenico is the only woman in the group. She signed up for the physical challenge. If, if we flog you, it's a red blur. And everything we're trying to do is just counterproductive. I'm um, of an Italian background, so like I really, apart from the basics at school, uh, don't have that connection. Lots of blokes around, just, you know, but I'll be fine. This food will have to last Jenny and her four paying colleagues for ten days. A team of local carriers led by Chris Arby will be there every step of the way. They can make it all the way to the finish line. What tells you that? Well, by the look of them, their feet, they can do it. It was a very different trick for the diggers of 1942. A ferocious Japanese advance from the north had them backpedalling to the doorstep of Port Moresby. Outgunned and outnumbered, undertrained and ill-equipped, the diggers also fought disease and starvation in their remarkable efforts to resist a relentless enemy. It was a feat that would become an inspiration for future generations and part of the folklore of a nation. It's hot, it's muggy, and it's slippery. And it can take anywhere between six to ten days to walk this muddy track. Yet over the past few years, the number of adventurers willing to put themselves through this ordeal has doubled. Yet as resilient as this jungle seems, this place is changing because of its modern day popularity. Last year, two and a half thousand walkers plodded through here. Like the popular pilgrimage to Gallipoli, Kokoda has become a magnet for those who want to acknowledge a defining event in our history. They come here in school groups and in professional sports teams. Corporate leaders use it as a bonding session. Others just want to say they've done it. It is just relentless. You go up a hill and you think, beauty, I've got to the top, but no, you haven't. There's another one after it, then another one after it. And then when you're going down, it takes forever as well. It's a very hard physical um, thing to do. Three days into the walk and Frank's group is battling the excruciating ups, 
and the daunting downs of the same track that sapped the spirit of Australians and Japanese alike. At this village, Frank's party encounters a much larger group coming the other way. They must share a tiny village and limited space to sleep. Frank's carriers take all the rubbish with them, but other groups don't have the same policy. The, uh, the toilet and rubbish thing is, is reaching a problem stage at the moment, and that, that's anti-social as far as the villagers are concerned, because it impacts on them. Tonight's a squeeze here, but in other villages there are too many guest houses, as locals vie for passing trade. There's also um, the competition uh, between the rest houses and so forth, and the people are not thoughtful on how they, um, they manage that, then you'll end up with, um, with more conflict. I can see that quite easily. Um, competition reaching violence, because that's a tool of resolution in this country. This week there's another group of arrivals on the Kokoda Trail. The villagers of Minari have turned out to greet a charter aircraft with a prized cargo. A load of day-old chickens has arrived. It's a delivery from a new government agency set up to manage the trail. The Kokoda Track Authority extracts the equivalent of $80 from each foreign trekker. The money is meant to improve facilities for the walkers and help villagers along the way. In a country hamstrung by corruption, there's a great deal of suspicion here. There's no suggestion the KTA is dishonest, but not all the money is filtering through. 40% of the takings are swallowed up in administration, and that's something that grates with village leaders like Sai Faioli. Life was changed when, when the workers come in. I really don't want the KTA to take over the Kokoda Trail because we are the land on us and we want to look after our land and we want to boss our land and let the workers come in. We are welcome. We are happy. The care and consideration shown for the wounded by the natives has won the complete admiration of the troops. With them, the black-skinned boys are white. In 1942, they earned a reputation for their muscle. They were the so-called Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels, who fed the Australian war machine and evacuated its casualties along the trail. Today, just a few remain. Turning the track into a quagmire, adding a thousandfold to their difficulties. Guys, my mate Bokoy, and uh, if you come and uh, introduce yourselves, and uh, I'll try and tell you a little bit about my friend here. Big Bob, how are you? Hello. Nice to meet you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenny. He was probably around about 14 years of age when the, uh, the fighting took place here. If they had hair under their arm, as far as they were concerned, they were old enough to carry. These days their sons and grandsons carry for the Australians in an industry that is the Kokoda Trail. It's a family commitment which um, suits me because I get steady workers and uh, guys that want to work. And I'll often, often have guys that have uh, done their, um, their sums and work out the three or four trips and they have paid for a number of their children to be educated for the year. It's paying off for Chief Carrier Chris Arby. Every step along the trail is more money earned to send his children to school in Port Moresby. 
all that is beneficial for the villages here. Yeah, there's so many people along the trek uh, now working as porters and guides, and every bit people along the trek are a bit happy about that. Although the new popularity of the track has changed the lives of these people, they still live off the land. But now much of their produce is sold to trekkers. Instead of a week-long journey to the market, the market comes to them. You think you know just about everything there is on this campaign, and there's always something else. Concealed in the jungle are the reminders of war. Frank has taken his group to a recently uncovered network of Japanese tunnels. We're a bit uneasy about going into them because of the risk of booby trapping. But on nearby mountains, more modern earthworks are less discreet. This gold mine near the village of Nardo provides alternative employment. Community leaders like Sai Faioli welcome the new money. Gold mining is good because uh, when uh, they, they are looking for gold, they just, uh, just in one area, they set up their campsite. There is another more threatening encroachment and it's eating the jungle. Along the mountain tops, there are new trails, the scars of logging activity. Selective logging has cleared vegetation to within just four kilometers of the track, and to the anger of villagers, it's getting closer. We don't want the logins to come in and destroy our environment. We just want to live in a jungle. Six days into his foray into the jungle, Cairns fitter and turner Les Browning is standing up to the test. Following his father's footsteps has been the spiritual journey he had hoped for. I've got myself into a mindset of just plodding. I just put one foot after the other and don't look at the top of the hill and keep struggling on. And of course I keep thinking of my father and the fact that he made it through so I'm almost on a bound to do the same thing. You know? It's not an issue of being male or female. We're just all here for you know, our own individual reasons, but it's great. And surviving also is Melbourne painter and now technician Ginny Di Gian Domenico. She came for the physical challenge, but now she's made that connection with the track's history. Meeting like the original Fuzzy Wuzzy Angel, um, that was amazing. That really um, gave me a little bit more purpose of why I was here. Not since the battles of 1942 have so many people moved along this path. This is the second group of the day to entertain and be entertained in this village. There are sometimes groups of 150 descending on these tiny trek stops. If you've got groups that size, very, very hard to supervise and see that they maintain the quality of um, behaviour, both on the, the hygiene and on the, the social side. Many believe the Kokoda campaign saved Australia. Certainly it's the closest land force threat we've ever had. Now villagers and walkers have become players in a complex enterprise that is the Kokoda Trail. The muddy track that's etched in military folklore faces its own battle for survival from the very people who revere it.